Good morning, and thank you for attending police headquarters. My name is Constable Carolyn DeClute, and I'm here today to introduce Deputy Chief Jim Raymer, who will be providing an update on Project Patton. Okay, good morning, everybody. And uh, as Carolyn said, we're, the purpose of today's news conference is to update everyone on the results of Project Patton. As was indicated yesterday by Chief Saunders, this investigation was commenced several months ago by the major project se section of the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force, specifically starting in September of 2017. The investigation focused on the criminal street gang known as the Five Point Generals. Early on, intelligence led our investigators to believe that members of the Five Point Generals and their associates were involved in numerous violent incidents over the past four years, including murders, attempted murders, firearm occurrences, including reckless discharges, sexual assaults, and numerous robberies. As you can see by the display of firearms today, the, 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 and narcotics and related evidence before you, investigators were able to substantiate and now allege that the Five Point Generals were involved in extensive gun and drug activity. I can advise that 60 of the handguns that you see before you today were obtained in a single seizure from an individual who was intending on delivering them to high-ranking individuals within the Five Point General's hierarchy. The guns were destined to become crime guns in Toronto and the GTA. This represents the largest single seizure of crime guns in the history of the Toronto Police Service. In addition, at one of the residences yesterday, officers located a handgun manufacturing and modification operation that was set up for the purpose of assembling handguns. This location contained numerous handgun parts and tools, including a drill press. We are also alleging, based on evidence gathered, gathered throughout the investigation, that the Five Point Generals operated as a coordinated criminal organization. Many of the charges laid in this investigation reflect this allegation. We are confident that with the assistance of our partner agencies, Project Patton, has significantly disrupted the criminal operations and the hierarchy of the Five Point Generals. I'd like to acknowledge the outstanding work of the investigators from the Integrated Gang and Gun Task Force, Major Projects Section, along with our partner agencies. The Peel Regional Police Sur Service, represented today by Superintendent Barry Dolan, the York Regional Police Service, represented by Superintendent Brian Bigras, and the Ontario Provincial Police, represented today by Detective Inspector Brad Nunn. Each of these services contributed significantly with respect to personnel and resources. I thank them for their partnership, their commitment to this operation and its success. The series of warrants executed yesterday were done professionally and safely. Beyond the obvious harm that gangs like the Five Point Generals inflict on the quality of life for people living in the affected communities, the reality is that the criminal activities of these street gangs cause a tremendous burden in so many areas of society including our health services, social services, and on local businesses. We must also not underestimate the emotional, psychological impact on victims, residents, and their families. The removal of such a significant number of violent individuals from our communities will be very positive for the law-abiding community members who have been forced to live amongst individuals who are believed to be gunmen and drug dealers, many of whom have displayed a total disregard for community safety. However, this proactive enforcement, though essential, is but one element of a multi-layered approach comprised of various levels of government that must continue to work collaboratively and continue to improve how we assist our communities. To the people of the neighbourhoods affected by our activities yesterday morning, we appreciate that large-scale police operations of this kind can be unsettling. Understand that our intentions are entirely directed at making your community safer. As part of our integrated gun gang prevention strategy, we have engaged our victim services unit along with a number of social agencies. Through these agencies, we are willing to assist anyone affected by this operation. This includes family members of those arrested and anyone with concerns for young persons who may be vulnerable to being lured into the gang lifestyle or may want to exit such a lifestyle. These services are offered free of charge. Please note that the phone numbers and email address provided on the screen. This information will also be provided in a follow-up news release. 
Additionally, beyond the support we're offering to the affected communities, I can advise that every single person arrested yesterday has been provided with referral information on how to obtain assistance and support to exit the gang lifestyle should they have the desire to do so. In closing, I'm confident that Project Patton will result in the incarceration of numerous violent gang members and that it has a direct and positive impact on community safety. We will continue to work with all our partners in both the justice system and social services in every way possible to ensure a holistic approach in order to provide a sustainable and positive impact on the communities affected. I will now turn over to Acting Inspector Don Belanger of the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force to provide you with some specifics in relation to Project Patton. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Good morning. With respect to the takedown of Project Patton, I can advise the following. 53 arrest and search warrants were executed yesterday in multiple jurisdictions, including Toronto, Peel, York Region, and Durham Region. 75 individuals have been arrested thus far. There will be over 1,000 charges laid, including offenses related to participating in a criminal organization, Firearm-related offenses including reckless discharges, unlawful possession of firearms, <coughs> firearms trafficking, and firearms importation. Charges in relation to illegal drug activity, including possession and trafficking. Robberies and additional weapons offenses. A complete list of accused persons and charges will be provided to you and perhaps already has been. It is significant to note that of the 75 persons arrested in Project Patton, only two are young persons, meaning under the age of 18. The individuals arrested in this operation are not simply kids being exploited by gang members, nor are they addicts being used to support their addictions. They are organized criminals, a significant number of whom are no strangers to the criminal justice system. In terms of what has been seized to date, much of it you see before you today. 78 firearms, including 75 handguns and three long guns. In addition, the gun manufacturing setup that Deputy Chief Raymer mentioned had enough parts uh, on hand to assemble an additional four handguns. Also, as uh, the deputy mentioned, of particular note is the fact that 60 of the handguns were in fact obtained in a single seizure from an individual who we allege was running guns for the Five Point Generals as part of a firearms smuggling operation. The in individual obtained the guns in Cornwall, was en route back to Toronto when he was taken down by our major projects team and our firearms enforcement unit. The 60 handguns, which were brand new, and they are the guns that you see in front of me here, many of them with um, multi-colored receivers. Um, they were located in the trunk of this individual's vehicle at the time of his arrest. We were subsequently able to identify the alleged gun suppliers who had purchased the firearms in the state of Florida. The Canadian Border Services Agency and the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms became partners in this investigation. I can report that this gun smuggling operation has now been dismantled. There is no doubt in the minds of investigators that these guns were destined for the streets of Toronto and the GTA to be used and sold by members of the Five Point Generals. When sold at the street level in Toronto, it's estimated that these 60 guns would generate profits of around $200,000. Also seized as part of this operation were 270 rounds of ammunition of various calibers, 75 firearms magazines, plus an additional 55 overcapacity magazines for a total of 130. Four tasers, a drill press that you see to my right as part of the manufacturing operation, a bulletproof vest, uh, and an extensive quantity of illicit drugs, including cocaine, fentanyl, car fentanyl, heroin, and marijuana. Again, much of it you see before you today. 
Additionally, we seized a cocaine press. When sold at the street level, this quantity of narcotics has the potential to generate as much as $1.2 million in profits. Speaking of money, Project Patent has resulted in the seizure of $184,000 in what we allege to be proceeds of the criminal activities undertaken by this organization. As the investigation progresses, I anticipate that that amount will increase. I'd like to acknowledge our asset forfeiture unit, along with FinTrack for their ongoing assistance in the investigation. Uh, now, with respect to our efforts yesterday morning, I can report that it involved the coordinated effort of hundreds of police officers representing 12 police services in Southern Ontario. Given the violent nature of the Five Point Generals, the vast majority of search and arrest warrants were executed in a dynamic fashion, many using tactical teams. Despite the high-risk nature of these warrants, I'm pleased to report that Rather amazingly, no injuries were sustained at all. This is a credit to the training and professionalism of the police officers involved in this operation, especially when you consider that many of the arrestees have histories of illegal firearms use. I cannot stress enough the enormous amount of work that goes into conducting an investigation of this magnitude. I'd like to acknowledge the outstanding efforts of the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force major project section for their many months of tireless work that culminated in yesterday's arrests and the seizure of the items that you see before you. I'd also like to acknowledge the other subunits of the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force, namely the Firearms Enforcement Unit, the Gang Analysis Unit, the Street Level Gun Teams, and the Firearms Investigative Analysis Unit for their long hours and significant contribution to Project Patton. The Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force is uh, a unit of elite investigators uh, whose efforts, as you can see, have a direct positive impact on community safety. I'd like to acknowledge the assistance we see from TPS Intelligence Services, the Emergency Task Force, along with every division and the various squads within our organization, the list of which would be too long to read out at this time. I'll echo the comments of Deputy Chief Raymer with respect to our partner agencies. Because the reach of the Five Point Generals extended beyond our borders, in the early days of this investigation, we requested support in the form of resources and personnel from the OPP, the York Regional Police, and Peel Regional Police. Each of these three agencies worked shoulder to shoulder with our investigators and deserve significant credit for the success of this project. I'd also like to acknowledge the significant contributions of the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force Crown Attorney's Office, which worked closely with our investigators over many months and, and certainly will continue to do so. Finally, on behalf of the Toronto Police Service, I'd like to also thank the following agencies for their assistance throughout Project Patton and particularly in relation to yesterday's uh, successful operations. The Cornwall Police Service, the Canadian Border Services Agency, the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, Halton Regional Police, Waterloo Regional Police, the London Police Service, Guelph Police Service, Barry Police Service, the RCMP, Durham Regional Police Service, and the Windsor Police Service. I will now take some questions. Uh, having said that, uh, I'd ask you to appreciate the fact that this is very much a fluid, ongoing investigation, so there will uh, possibly be questions that I'm not able to answer at this time. Deputy Chief Raymer said that this gang is alleged to be involved in murders, attempted murders, reckless discharges. Can you sort of paint us a picture of what sorts of activities you're alleging they've been up to in Toronto? Yeah. The information we had in relation to murders and attempted murders um, really formed the uh, genesis of this investigation. We had intelligence, uh, which we felt was uh, legitimate concrete intelligence that told us that this group was involved in those activities. Um, I will not get into specifics as to exactly which incidents uh, because they are still under investigation. I can advise you that as the investigation unfolded. Um, we have put people before the courts now 
who were involved in firearms discharges and uh, attempt murders, but I can't go into specifics at this time. So there are still, like no more, I understand no murder charges have been laid. Are you saying that the people that are in custody now could be facing murder charges down the road? I don't want to comment on that. Inspector, we've been here smuggling operation. This is massive. That um, allegedly this um, suppl supplier brought guns from Florida into Canada, and then you were able to, you know, seize these in the trunk of the car. Does this concern you that these guns are coming across the border so freely, destined for Toronto? Uh, of course, it's concerning. Um, I mentioned, I did mention that these guns uh, were purchased in Florida. I can tell you that Florida traditionally is not a source state for smuggled guns, at least guns arriving uh, on the streets of Toronto. So uh, from that, we conclude that although it was a sophisticated operation, we feel that we've um, shut it down in its early stages. But does this tell you that maybe there's this pipeline um, between the U.S. and Canada that, that is open that you didn't know about that we, we have to stop? Um, well, let me just say that, this, as I said, this investigation is ongoing, um, so I'm not going to comment further on that. When was that seizure made? Uh, that seizure was made approximately one month ago. And are you alleging that that guy is a member <coughs> of the Five Point Generals? Uh, certainly an associate. So this was a month ago that you found that in his trunk? Approximately, okay. yeah. Inspector, we've had these um, raids before. We've been here before with the with the Five Points Generals, so can you, when you talk about disrupting them, what does that really mean in practice? Because they don't go away, they just reload. Yeah, it's a fair question. Uh, we are not so naive to believe that when we make mass arrests like this and, and seize firearms and drugs like this, that uh, you know, we realize it creates a void. Uh, we realize that uh, drugs equal easy money and that there will always be people willing to step in and fill that void. Um, as Deputy Chief Raymer mentioned, we have uh, implemented a gang prevention initiative that uh, is being rolled out and we feel um, will have some, will assist us in, <coughs> excuse me, in, in preventing that from happening in the future. It's, it's essentially part of what we call a maintenance plan. Um, Again, this is one gang and its associates. Uh, there are several gangs, as we know, unfortunately, across the city, but this is also just one operation that's ongoing. Of the accused, how many of you have you arrested in past uh, takedowns? Are we seeing some familiar names from, from uh, another project involving this gang? Yes. Uh, project Corral, which took place in 2010, uh, also targeted this gang. I can tell you that 13 individuals arrested in Project Corral were arrested as part of Project Patton. Beyond that, I can also tell you that 68 of the accused persons have prior criminal records. And of those uh, 13 that were arrested in Project <coughs> Corral, how many of those were convicted in, in Project Corral? I don't have that information in front of me. You know, like are, are there, are there <coughs> yesterday or as part of this project that have served time before yes. because of their association specifically to the Five Point Generals? Yes, there are absolutely people that served their sentence and were released and chose to return to a life of criminality. How frustrating is this for you knowing that you know you, you, you arrested these guys eight years ago, some of them for very violent crimes and yet they are back on the streets allegedly doing the same thing? Yeah, of course it's frustrating but again we're not naive. We know that um, not everyone that goes through the uh, correctional process comes out rehabilitated. That's just the reality of it. And um, unfortunately, these people are lured back into the gang life. And, uh, you know, let's be honest, I don't think the day will ever come where we can completely stop that. <clears throat> but of 98 people, you know, 13, the number's 13. So Number 98 that's right. I have two questions about the gun, so one sure. for yourself and one for <coughs> Raymer as well. The mm. first one is, um, I was wondering if you can tell us, particularly in this hall here, was it at the regular border at Cornwall or was it somewhere else? Like, was it through a border patrol or a different way? As much as I would like to answer that question, Joe, I just simply can't at this point. 
the second question, you perhaps you can both answer it. I think that we're all, all of us are stunned, and a lot of us don't know the gun culture. So I, in my time, have not seen designer sort of cool running shoe style guns before. Yeah. And I, I want to know if you, a, you've seen that before, what it is, and tell us a little bit about the market for that. Is that for young uh, females or for, is, is it marketing uh, material? And, and I think maybe Deputy can talk about it as well as the mechanics and also the concern how that would draw people in. Sure. We have seen it on a limited basis, never to this degree that I can recall. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, let me put it to you this way. As a result of, of these multicolored receivers, many of which look like toys, we will be sending out uh, an officer safety bulletin because many of these guns, if they were to be pointed at a police officer, <coughs> excuse me, they could very easily conclude that uh, either a toy gun or a water pistol, for that matter, is being pointed at them. And we now see, and, and I just want to make it very clear for everybody here, that every single one of these firearms is a real firearm. Of the 60, um, 59 were 9 millimeter semi-automatic handguns. One was a 40 caliber uh, semi-automatic handgun. That's the question I was going to have for the deputy. This, I look at it and I see a crisis here with these guns for your officers. Um, in every division, not just in the dealing with this, but uh, this is, and I'm glad you mentioned that about sending out the directive. How big a concern is this for you, safety-wise? Yeah, well, it's, it's a huge concern, and that's why we're, we're taking those steps. And uh, I mean, there's continual training for our officers and, and, and briefings and intelligence reports to keep them apprised of what they're facing out on the streets. And, and so our officers are very aware of of, uh, of of what they're having to address out there. You haven't seen this before. This, uh... The the colors, no. Actually, that was uh, that was uh, a first for me to see that, and it's it's very concerning. I mean, I when I first saw it, I, I commented the the one in orange looked like a water pistol that my granddaughter has, and uh, how easily that could be uh, misinterpreted by someone looking at them. So, Deputy Chief, you're alleging these colorful guns are part of the cash that were smuggled into the U.S. So these are. What, like they're, they're, all, they're all part of that, that one seizure. single seizure, yes. Are they, are they popular in, in Florida? Like this <coughs> you know what, I, I can't answer that question for you. We, we have our chief firearms officer here. He'll be able to answer some questions and, and some of the details and specifics if you have those. But uh, I can just tell you it's the first time I've seen them. Can you history. speak a little bit more to the gun manufacturing facility that, that you guys found? Like, what is it? You said you found all these different parts to put guns together. Are they taking like a mishmash of different guns and, and making them into guns? Are we seeing like Frankenstein guns? Or like what exactly are they doing with the stuff that we're seeing on the table over there, allegedly? Um, I, again, uh, we have our, our firearms officer here. It would be best to answer some of those questions for you because I, I certainly can't answer it, uh, the kind of detail you would like. Sorry. You, you said these guns were being sold on the street, then they would have uh, brought in, what, a couple hundred thousand? So what, what is the, the going rate for a, for a firearm on the streets these days? I wanted to buy a gun like this. Right, so we anticipate or estimate, sorry, that um, these guns could be purchased in Florida for approximately $500. And a gun like this will sell on the streets of Toronto for approximately $4,000. You, you have to remember, these are brand new guns. Um, what is described amongst the gang culture as a clean gun. <clears throat> clean guns uh, demand more than dirty guns, which is obviously a gun that's been used in a previous shooting. Were these guns purchased uh, legally in Florida, or were they stolen, or do you have any idea the origin of these uh, pistols? Uh, I better not answer that question, sorry. Is there any one or, or few people that you guys are alleging was the, the kingpin or the gang leader of the Five Point Generals? Uh, I won't go into specifics on that other than to say uh, we are confident that we have arrested uh, the highest ranking members of the organization um, and I'll leave it at that. Are there people facing charges of instructing for the purpose of a criminal organization? Yes. How Most many people? <coughs> Multiple. More yep. than five? You, you'll have the list. I don't have it in front of me right now. Would you agree that that would speak to how many people are leading this gang or in the upper echelons? Yep, it's a very well-defined hierarchy.
All male? Uh, we had, I believe, nine females in total. Inspector, is there any connection to the gang from the United States? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. Where do things stand with the bail hearings for these accused? Uh, they all uh, appeared yesterday at Toronto West Courts um, and were remanded. Actually, I'm not sure when they were remanded to. Any I'm any sorry? Plea? Were any given bail? I don't know. Yesterday there were 38 people that were appearing. Is that like were, were the rest of them arrested throughout the day or have there been lots of other people arrested in previous months? There have been other people arrested for sure uh, and there were some people that were charged but released. And yesterday Chief Saunders spoke about the tentacles of this gang reaching down to the Caribbean across Canada. Can you talk to in what respect he was referring? Uh, yes, I can't again be specific but I can tell you in relation to obviously uh, firearms, importation, smuggling, and uh, drugs as well. For all, for all three, for across Canada and to the Caribbean? That's right, that's right. How were these individuals um, communicating and organizing with each other? It seems pretty sophisticated. You said it's sophisticated. Did they meet in person? Did they have a clubhouse? Were they texting each other? What was the day-to-day -day operation of this gang life? Uh, I have to be careful how I answer that question, but um, let's just say we've seized um, over 200, I believe, digital devices, so I'll leave it at that. Did, did they have any, um, uh, you know, above board uh, businesses or dealings that maybe money was laundered through nightclubs or bars or anything like that? They were aware of? No. Is this the big the gang in Toronto, and how many others in the police radar now? Is it the biggest? Uh, I would say one of the biggest. Um, in terms of uh, what other gangs are on the police radar, uh, numerous, and I really can't expand on that. I was just going to ask one more thing about the guns. The, um, the material that it's made out of, uh, is it plastic or what, what exactly you know what I would do folks is I'd invite you to uh, speak to our we can do this at the end speak to uh, our chief firearms officer Bruce Finn because he's really the expert when it comes to the question that I wondered is is that set up so that fingerprints are not able to be captured is that something that that could be uh, Capturing of fingerprints has a lot to do with the, the texture of the surface, so I don't know if that's the case or not. <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. That concludes today's conference. Thank you for attending. We have a news release that will go out shortly with all the specifics of the individuals arrested and their charges.